So talking about schools, why do you feel it's most important to speak to young people about your experience? Well, that, that's, I always, uh, it is very important to speak to young people because we have to stop this rot set in and it has to be from the young people uh, to, to teach them that um, we must not be silent when, when they see something and I always stress it again and again don't be a bystander get involved and look what what can happen if you don't do it and you know we, we see it now it, it's a really appropriate time and uh, what happened in France look millions were marching and it's not enough. We, we actually have to be actively involved to stop this happening. Every time this type of thing happens, we have to prepare the population. We want democracy, but somewhere we have to become proactive and there will be things done that are not democratic, but perhaps we have to find a balance. Uh, to stop these things before they happen. And I think this is what we hear about the uh, foreigner, uh, foreign, um, the ministers of foreign affairs and all. they meeting, they're obviously talking about something and I mean, it, it's just dreadful that when you hear the news and they say, they went to train and they were this, they did that, they had a comment. They knew everything about them, yeah. yet they mm -hmm. let it happen yeah. and it was too late. So many people had to die. After your, your liberation from the camp and all the rest, um, what, obviously you were faced with the decision of you know, where, where you go then and, and what to do. What, why, what influenced your decision to go to Israel and then a little bit later then to, to join the, the army there? Yeah, I get this question. Yeah, the thing was that when we returned to Slovakia, I mean, we did not know any other country, only Slovakia, that was our home. But uh, <clears throat> when we came, we came after the war, very quickly the Cold War yeah. started to be created. And when we come, because we come from the west, western part, which was uh, occupied by England, America, and uh, this country, we come to the eastern part, which was occupied by Russia and thing. So in fact, we come as emigrants, not as returning Slovaks. There were no people on the street and cheering that uh, our citizens return. He come, we come as emigrants to our own country. Suddenly, we were strangers that come back to our country. When they made the agreement with Germany uh, to take the Jews away, Slovakia agreed to pay 500 mark for every Jew that was taken out of Slovakia. That was a unique agreement. No other country ever paid the German. Slovakia was the only one, and that was done under the watchful eye of a Roman Catholic priest, Joseph Tissa. And the condition was, we will pay you the 500 mark, but these Jews should never come back. And when we were coming back, this, this uh, group of people that were still uh, fascist and things said, well, more of them are coming back that were taken away. As I said, there were 90,000 Jews. Uh, I mean, about uh, 70,000 perished, and yet they were saying more of them are come going back. Uh, as young people at the time, we joined the, the, the um, Zionist organization, I joined as well, and there we were sort of um, indoctrinated, you can say it, that our country is Palestine at the time. Israel, you know, and then when the uh, state of Israel was declared in 1948, we emigrated. We, we said we didn't feel anymore home in Slovakia. We were like strangers in our own land. And uh, I must say one thing that uh, the first time that I came back to Slovakia after I left was about 40 odd years. 
And when I come to the village, still our house was there, the, we sold it to somebody, and I felt I come home. <laughs> Every time I go in there, I feel I come home. <laughs> but of course, it's not my home anymore. And the amazing thing is, when I said to my brother, you know, it's just this amazing feeling I get. I come there and I feel like coming home. And he said, you know what? When I go there, the same thing. So uh, there is this uh, connection that we never will lose, but uh, of course it's, my home is now here, you know. And how did you feel, like how did you find integrating back into life after Belsen? Well, as I said, we, we had not, uh, we couldn't think about it. Uh, and as I said, we never talked about it. Or we just came back. There were no uh, doctors that um, uh, welcomed us or psychiatrists, you know, like today when you uh, go through a trauma, you know, we, we, we know it from the troubles in Northern Ireland when a bomb exploded. So there were all these treatment these people got. Uh, psychologically and everything, because it is a trauma, I think. We didn't have that. We just come back and we never talked. Nobody asked us uh, what we went through, never talked about it. We just went and we had to learn. As I said, I, I, I had to start in, in, in classes with six, seven-year-old children. I was 10 years old. That, that was very demeaning, you know, I, I felt, you know, at that age, one year is a big difference, you know. Now, 10, 20 years, no difference when I'm at my age now, but as a child, well, you know it, yeah, they yeah. have one class above you, they are adult, you know. Mm -hmm. So, we just had to get and start to learn, and um, as I said, we did okay. I, I qualified as an engineer, and I studied, and uh, so there you are. So. Yeah, and even from that, like you, you always, you always tend to end the end your your story with, with a high note, or and it's just it, it's it's very striking that straight away one of the first things that I, that I recognise is that you always seem to maintain a, a positive outlook on, mm -hmm. on, on on what's happening, and it's I, I just I just would like to know. How, how you came about doing you know, that? The, the, the simple question is, you know, people would ask you, hey, you hate the German? I mean, these people, what they did to and everything. And I don't, uh, not that I would uh, uh, forgive them for what they did, but for example, for the young generation in Germany, I, I respect them greatly because they built a democracy that it's uh, now for example for the whole of Europe you know so uh, if I would hate them it would actually be an insult uh, to the, these people and when I met Alexandra I mean that the, even though her grandfather what he did and everything like it I respect her greatly but she there are not many like this like Alexandra that come forwards and I met uh, some of them, you saw that, yeah. close to you. I met, uh, and I tell you, it was a very emotional meeting. <laughs> very difficult at the time. You don't see it on the film because, uh, you know, in film, uh, we have the art of editing things. Yeah. So you don't see many things what happened during the filming. But I was, I was sitting there. <laughs> shaking, I mean, it, it, it was just a dreadful experience. But there are people that are coming forward, unfortunately, and I don't many of them. It's still, uh, people are living, and you know, there are families. In Germany, every family had somebody involved, whether in atrocity or in the Wehrmacht, in the, in the proper soldier, they were the, you can call them good people, but they murdered as well. But the uh, majority of Germans, they have each passed. And it's amazing when we were filming and we were interviewing these people, he would say, well, my grandfather or my father, I had one uncle, he was, uh, he was a good man. He wasn't um, in the Nazi party, but he was a, policeman or he was a 
soldier in the Wehrmacht. And the other uncle, he was um, in the SS. I don't know what he did. He never told us. So there is every family has a past. So what are you going to do? You're going to hate everybody. You can't do this. I mean, uh, especially if they're, they're not uh, responsible for what their grandfather or father did, you know. But at the same time, you have to think also uh, another thing. Suppose I would have been born in Germany. Suppose I would have been at the age that I would have been recruited in the SS. What would have I done? Can I, can I judge other people, you know, with the indoctrination and propaganda, everything? We don't know what we would do. It's all right sitting now and saying, I couldn't do something like this, but who knows, you know.